Anna graduated from the University of Queensland in 2015. She then went on to complete a rotating specialist internship at VSS Carrara in 2016. She's currently working in small animal general practice on the Gold Coast. Her professional interests include small animal medicine and ultrasonography. Thank you. I didn't realise I was supposed to put uh, pictures of my animals in this slide. I don't think I would have been able to stop if I started. I have a very, very cute kitten who has his own Instagram page and also um, a border collie. And he also comes in a little backpack when I go for a walk. Anyway, um, just to let you all know, I performed this research in 2015 when in my final year of u university. Um, so we're still in the process of being published, but hopefully keep your eyes peeled, it should be soon. Um, before I start, I'd like to acknowledge my research supervisor, Jackie Rand, who's here today somewhere, um, and the other con oh, hello, <laughs> and other contributors, uh, John Morton and Sophie Fleming. So, early age desexing, desexing under 24 weeks of age or the before the first estrus, compared to traditional age desexing between six and nine months of age, as we were just mentioning before, where most vets are desexing. So in the year before this study um, was performed, the annual RSPCA report admitted over 49,000 cats and 45,000 dogs into the shelters, and 31% of these cats and 15% of these dogs were euthanized. In the most recent annual RSPCA report, um, less dogs but more cats were admitted, but overall the euthanasia rate was lower, which is good. So shelters in Australia in 2006 to 2010, uh, 50%, over 50% 50 of the cats entering RSPCA shelters were kittens and 40% of these kittens were from owned queens, so not strays. In contrast, only 26% of dogs entering RSPCA shelters in Queensland in 2015 were puppies. So, in the literature, it says 90% of uh, cats owned in Australia are desexed, but 12 to 20% have a litter before the procedure, which kind of begs the question, why? Is it because cats reach puberty at four months of age before traditional age desexing, or do vets have a concern in regards to the procedures? Um, in a Western Australia study where cats presented for discounted microchipping, less than 50% of cats under two years of age were desexed when 90% of cats two years or more were desexed. Again, so it supports that, you know, owners are getting their cats desexed, but it's too, too late to prevent a litter. And in dogs, I guess it's not as much of a concern because sexual maturity varies between six and 14 months of age, but ideally it would be nice to lower those numbers. So early age desexing uh, does have a lot of support. Again, in Australia, we have the RSPCA and the Animal Welfare League. And overseas we have, you know, the AVMA and the BSAVA, but despite all this support, uh, veterinarians in general practice aren't performing these procedures. Again, begging the question why, is it because we don't graduate with the skills and knowledge to perform them, or do we have concerns in regards to these procedures? So the aims of this study were to identify the attitudes and opinions of veterinary teaching staff in Australia and New Zealand towards early age desexing, to determine if there's a shift in these attitudes, opinions and teaching since 2008, and to identify what veterinary students across Australia and New Zealand are being taught in regards to early age desexing. So Deansville Heads of Schools identified those staff teaching early age desexing to students in their schools. These staff were then contacted by email and asked to participate, and questionnaires were completed via a combination of phone and or email. So in 2015, eight universities were involved. Um, 29 out of the 31 staff that were identified as early age desexing, um, teaching to students, were, completed the questionnaire. And in 2008, five universities um, were involved and 15 out of the 21 staff that I, were identified as teaching early age desexing completed the questionnaire. This latter questionnaire study was performed by Sophie Fleming. So in regards to the questionnaire, um, staff were asked, when all factors considered, including safety and population control, the best age bracket to desex, client-owned cats and dogs, and shelter cats and dogs. Staff were also asked, in their personal opinion, do they advocate early age desexing, and why or why not? And in your teaching of desexing, are you advocating its use to students? 
Now, in 2015, we added in some additional questions that weren't used in 2008, but we had to keep the same questions um, the same, including age brackets, age brackets to make that comparison. So in 2015, we also asked if students were able to view or perform early age desexing before graduation and if staff perform these procedures themselves. So four staff members uh, answered the questionnaires in both years, so were excluded from the comparison. Procedure for inc incompletely paired binary data was used and p-values were calculated using the z-distribution, thanks to Dr John Morton. So in 2015, our results. Staff chose the best age bracket to desex female and male owned cats between four and five months of age and shelter cats three months or less. In 2015, in response to the same question, staff elected the best age bracket to desex female and male client-owned dogs six months or over, female dogs in shelters six months or over, and male dogs in shelters three months or less. So, since 2008, in comparing years, only three groups were found to have significantly changed. So, female cats in shelters, male cats in shelters and male dogs in shelters. For all three of the above groups, less staff members were advocating early age desexing in their teaching. In response to your quest the question, in your personal opinion of early age desexing, do you advocate its use? A majority of staff indicated no. 68% of staff indicated no in cats and 80% of staff indicated no in dogs. And overall, in their teaching of early age desexing to students, 24% have advocated its use. So that number's up there is wrong. It's actually 24%, which is only 2% better. But very few were advocating early age desexing in their teachings. So these were the added questions in 2015. Staff with current early age desexing experience, in answer to the question, in the last 12 months, how many puppies and kittens have you desexed four months or less, with or without students? 35% of staff had current early age desexing experience with cats, but only 30% had current experience with dogs. Only one staff member in the last 12 months had performed these procedures without students, and overall these procedures were performed more in cats than in dogs. In regards to student exposure, this one was quite interesting. Three out of the eight universities provided opportunities for students to gain exposure to early age desexing before graduation. So only three out of the eight universities across Australia and New Zealand. Two of these provided a majority of students hands-on experience um, with early age desexing before graduating. These three universities had a working association with animal rescue groups and shelters or fostering societies. So out of the percentage of veterinary um, teaching academics that did not advocate early age desexing in, uh, to students in their teachings. They had three major concerns. In 2015, anaesthetic risk, increased risk of one or more medical problem, and hyperglycemia. And again, these top three concerns were expressed the same in 2008 by staff. So in regards to anaesthetic risk, I can't, don't really have time to touch on it, but in the literature there are anaesthetic protocols that have been identified as safe for use in early age desexing procedures. And when appropriate anaesthetic and surgical protocols are used, there is no risk um, in uh, anaesthetic early age desexing. In regards to medical problems, staff identified concerns about hip dysplasia, cruciate ligament rupture and urine incontinence in female dogs. In regards to hip dysplasia, there is a paper by Spain that identifies um, an association with increased incidence of hip dysplasia with a less uh, decreasing age of desexing, but it was a less severe form compared to traditional age of desexing. Um, and again, this finding wasn't supported by other studies. In regards to urinary incontinence in female dogs, there is an association between urinary incontinence and desexing. Only one study found an increased risk of incontinence with a decrease, decreasing risk, uh, decreasing age of desexing, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, but this, again, was not associated with an increased relinquishment or euthanasia rate. Um, and again, other studies haven't found the same difference between early age desexing and traditional age desexing. 
um, for that 24% of staff that did advocate early age desexing in their teachings. Um, their main benefits were population control, ease of surgery and pos positive behavioural changes. Um, in regards to ease of surgery, staff reported younger patients had benefits such as less bleeding, faster recovery and more elastic tissue. And I, get, I can say uh, from my personal experience being my first year out in GP this year, I would much rather a younger patient than a two-year-old or three-year-old bitch space. So I definitely agree with that and it is supported in the literature as well. Um, again, positive behavioural changes staff thought um, desexing earlier reduced unfavourable behaviours such as spraying in cats, aggressiveness in dogs and roaming behaviour in dogs. So again, supported in the literature. So overall, this study was limited by the number of respondents as well as those currently teaching at universities in 2015 and their personal experiences. Um, also, the questionnaire questions and age brackets, we had to keep them the same as 2008 in order to that comparison to be made. In conclusion, most teaching staff are not advocating early age desexing to students and even less so compared to 2008. And most of the risks given as, um, as reasons staff do not advocate early age desexing aren't supported in the literature, especially for cats. And finally, only a minority of veterinary students are graduating with hands-on experience um, in regards to performing early age desexing. So recommendations, it would be really beneficial for students to graduate with exposure to early age desexing. It would increase surgical skills, increase understanding of goals of humane organisations and increase awareness of the over pet overpopulation problem. And again, this is supported by a study that was done by Hal and Slatter in 1997 where they, were asked, they asked students to evaluate um, early age desexing programs in their um, education. Um, so finally, veterinary schools could partner with welfare agencies so students have more of an opportunity to learn early age desexing procedures so they can develop the confidence and skills to do so when they go out and practice.